I got into DJing like in 82. Uh, my first party, I was doing like basement parties, things like that uh, in the neighborhood. So I was like the neighborhood DJ that basically what how I started and what I wanted to start was the people that couldn't go to the downtown parties or the music box or playground and stuff like that. I brought the music to the hood because I was grew up in Inglewood. So I would, you know, for the kids that couldn't do parties, I mean, that couldn't go to parties outside the neighborhood or couldn't afford to go downtown and things like that. Me and my uh, my partner at the time, my brother, rest in peace, King George Seymour, we was doing parties in the neighborhood and we was doing them like at Ogden Park. We started off at Ogden Park. Well, I was doing the basement thing. Then we went to Ogden Park and then we started DJing out of this, out of this, uh, church, but it wasn't the church, it was actually the hall across the street from the church called St. Stephen's. So that was, uh, and we called it the courtyard. And so that's where all the kids would come on the weekend from Inglewood to, you know, experience the the house music thing at, the, at when it first was, you know, when house was like really booming. The first piece of equipment I bought was a 606 drum machine by Rolling. That drum machine, because I couldn't afford the 808, the 606 sounded similar, and that was the track. That was the drum machine that I used when I made my first record, which was Dance You Mother, which is Dance You Mother, You Mother, 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 Mother. mother. So, but at the time, it was me, Tyree, Hugo, H. We would like ball equipment, like uh, Marshall Jefferson had an 808 and we would borrow it all the time to make beats on them. We would borrow it for a couple weeks and make as many tracks as we could with it. And uh, then we would give it back to Marshall. But yeah, my first, my first piece of studio equipment was a 606 drum machine and Nah, I don't. I, I don't even own it no more. I still got, you know, the drum samples, but not the actual unit. My concept behind the DJ was because I was making tracks at home. The reason I started bringing Real to Reels to the party was because I needed a way to present my edits, to play my edits and play tracks that I had made, or Tyree, or Hugo, uh, and spinning with a cassette deck was, you know, it was too slow for me, because you, you had to fast forward, listen, you'll pass the cue point, you'll miss the cue point, so I needed something quick. The real to real was quicker for me because it felt like a turntable, because I could be able to rock it, you know, if you don't know about Real to Reels, we had lead tape that we put in between each track. So when you saw a white piece of tape go through, you know the next song was there. So it was easy to fast forward it, look, see that white piece of tape, okay, that's the song. Or we would mark it with the numbers on our boxes and then we'll go like, at 300, this the next song. At 720, this the next song. So it was easy to ding, ding, bloom, and get it and cue it up and pow, put it right in. So at first I started with one reel to reel and then I was like playing a record and then I'd have to play a record, then a track, then a record, then a track. I couldn't ever play two of 
unreleased or stuff I had made back to back. So that's when I started bringing the two reel to reels to the party so that I can go back and forth. And, you know, I just wanted, you know, the thing was, was to be different. It's what sets you apart from the next DJ. I mean, everybody can go by the same records. Everybody can go by the same equipment. But what makes you different than the next DJ? And that's, that's the niche I found that made me different than a lot of the other DJs that were playing.